rebuilding a Hynotic H50 steering helm. So there's a few places online that offer to rebuild these and they say, whatever you do, do not ever attempt this. You'll cause the sun to crash into the earth or something like that. Um, but we're gonna pull this thing apart and show you that this is in fact something that you can do. This is not gonna be something that you're gonna pop apart and put back together in five minutes in your basement in a dusty, dirty environment. This is gonna take some time to be clean, to be careful, and take our time pulling this apart and replacing the seals that have a tendency to leak after, you know, the 20, 30 plus years that these things have been in operation. So this one in particular has a leak right here around the shaft seal. So we have to disassemble the entire thing to get to that seal, replace it, and then reinstall it on the boat. So we're gonna put this in the vise down here and disassemble it ever so carefully. And so let's get into that and I'll talk you through the process. Now the first thing we're gonna wanna do is clamp here on this flat part so we can break loose these four bolts. That's what holds the whole assembly together. So with my vise, I can only manage to clamp and access two of them at a time. So let's just crack these two guys loose. We're not gonna take them all the way out just yet. We just want to get them broken loose. Now this could be messy too, so I wouldn't recommend doing it in your kitchen. Your wife or girlfriend may be upset. I already cracked these two loose off camera. Just for my own mind's sake, I'm going to make a little paint marker line, just like that, so that I know which orientation these two pieces go back together. Because if you put these back together in the wrong orientation, it's turned by 90 or 180 degrees, it can throw your steering off or it may not work at all. It's gonna cause some issues with the timing and such of how this whole assembly works. So my next step is gonna be grabbing some rags to wrap around our shaft so that I can put the shaft into the vise and lock this thing in. Doesn't have to be crazy tight. Then we're gonna pull these bolts out. Now over off to the side here, I've got a little plastic tote with some rags in it as well so that I have somewhere to put these parts as I remove them where they're not gonna get dirt, they're not gonna get debris on them. So those four bolts out, we will very carefully take and lift this up, possibly turn it a little bit to break the seal of the two halves. And very, very carefully pull this up out. There we have it. That is our top plate. Grab this rag. You see this nasty old fluid down in here. Clean some of that off and set this whole assembly aside. We're gonna replace these three O-rings, but that's not what we're concerned about right now. Let me drain this out into a drain pan and then we'll continue. Okay, so I've drained this out mostly. There's probably still a small amount of oil in there. We're gonna turn this thing over and let it fall out. Now, ideally we want all of this stuff to stay in the same orientation. So, let me set that off to the side. You see each of these that has fallen out. We're gonna set them all right back in where they go. And then we're gonna take this and set it off to the side and see we lost one ball bearing down in there. Put that in our Rubbermaid tote. And now down in here, you've got this little pin. See this guy sticking out? We're gonna pull that out, set that to the side, and our ball bearing can go back into 
there for the time being. But you see all of our little bearings down in there. And as we turn this, that doesn't move. Well, take and ever so carefully, try not to tip this so the bearings don't fall out, but we're going to take and push this shaft up through our housing. Our shaft comes out. And there it is. Shaft removed. Set that aside in our little container. Okay, so you see all of our little bearings down in there. We're going to make an attempt. Getting all of them out. So we get a few out there. So that doesn't seem too terribly inclined to come out. Now we can kind of grab this white plastic thing here and we can pull this up out. It may need a little encouragement from this side or that side, but that white piece will just slide out that those bearings are sitting in down there. And we can slide that out so we have access to those seals. So I will pull that out and then you can see. Okay, so with that popped out, see some pins stayed that is convenient so we can get it in exactly the same position and now our seals down here in the very end right down here can be pushed down you see how hard those seals are that I can just push them with my fingers so with those out we can see the stack up of our seals and how they all went together and then we can get our new seals HS-05 there's a link to this in the description so you can pick up a set of seals now there are two different seals in here for two different style helms now we will examine that in just a second so these are the seals that come in the kit this little seal with a embedded o-ring this little, I believe it's called a polypack seal. And then an O-ring and a quad ring, as this is called. So these are for 1986 and older. This one is used on newer ones. So this is the style that we pulled out. So this is what we're going to put back in. So these two just get discarded. Then with a 15 16 socket on an extension, we can get down in there and seat this little polypack seal right where it needs to go. Okay, so you just gently tap that in and you hear the pitch change of when you're tapping it in. So at that point polypack seal is seated nicely there. We haven't cracked anything. We haven't marred anything. It all looks perfect. So now we will take our little embedded o-ring seal here and we can just push this one down in by hand. That just needs to be pressed down in so that it sits down in there nicely. Now we can start reassembling. So let's find our plastic piece that holds all of our ball bearings and we've got a thrust washer here with a bearing so I'm gonna take this assembly out and put it down in here then I can match up this to pop these bearings out too before we get into here match this up To right where it needs to sit, which is just like this. Push that right down in where it needs to be. That's seated. So now we'll put all of our ball bearings back into there.
Each of them pushes in and kind of seats a little bit. So in theory, it should hold them in place when we're assembling the other pieces. that and reassembled. Now we'll put our shaft back through here. So with that pushed in, shaft is all the way through where we want it. We can put our next piece of the assembly back together. Our little pin. Now with this, we need a flat facing up and down. It can't be sideways or we'll never get it back together. So this needs to go back down in here and we're going to do this sideways. So I've got my key down there facing up and down. And we're going to put this in sideways so that we don't drop pistons out and just slide it right onto there. And I think our, hold this over the tray. Yep, our keyway fell out. So I'm gonna put this back in again. I'm gonna make sure that I've got it facing the right direction, but also I'm going to make sure to hold it on the side. So like this, it's going to fall out if I do it like that. So hold this and put in our piston assembly. Okay, and now once it's in, You'll have some kind of springy action on there. So that means you're good there. Snug that back into the vise. And we'll grab our valve assembly. Now each of these O-rings, we'll just pick them off and replace those. So grab some kind of a little pick or something. Just get in here and pry these off. One by one, got our three new O-rings from the kit. So we'll just slide these guys back on. Right where they're supposed to be. And this is kind of an oily, nasty job. And it's stinky too. This oil does not smell very nice. It's, it's pretty old, so. That is one issue that you may run into. If you do this and you have oil that's contaminated with something like water, it will just undo all of your work. It will, it will destroy this pump again. So now that we have all of our new O-rings on here, all of our new seals in here and everything back together just how it goes, we're going to line up our X. Now if for some reason you didn't mark the orientation with a paint pen like I did, on the instruction sheet that comes with the um, seal kit, there's a little notice that explains how the X that's here and the X that's over here need to be oriented. Now that is imperative the proper operation. I will blow that up and put it on the screen for you. Just ease this on. Pass those O-rings. A little oil can help you if you need it.
just snug these up. Okay. It's all back together. Brand new seals. Our helm is ready to go back in this boat. Hopefully it will be steering flawlessly and not leaking fluid everywhere anymore because that has a tendency of ruining the uh, finish of your uh, decking or carpet or whatever uh, situation your mo boat might be in. I don't know of many moats that have helms, but if they do, it wouldn't be good if you had fluid leaking into it. So hopefully this has been helpful to you. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to rebuild one of these. You just need to be patient, calm, take your time, do it a step at a time, and just work your way through it a little bit at a time and it'll come apart no problem go back together no problem so thanks for watching and stay tuned to the next video we've got more interesting stuff always some exciting adventure i get into so stick around for that and uh, thanks for watching